Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are back. This is going to be week seven, I believe. I believe this is the second to last week of the PGL and U Cup. And this is going to be a really, really tough matchup. I believe I'm facing somebody who is undefeated right now. Uh, I don't think we have official results for their week six match, but they are five and zero, oh, which is instantly just nuts. I do kind of think that we have the team to take them on. It's just definitely going to be a matter of playing well and I guess getting in those matchups that are going to help me win here. I think my team matches up really well. I'm kind of confident. I'm kind of confident. Now, pretty much everything on my team has steel coverage for that Diancie. I know he wants to set up his Diancie um, and anything that can get steel or fire coverage is going to have it because three members of his team are quad weak to it between the Alolan Sand Slash, the Diancie and the Obama Snow. Three mons that I know he likes to use. We're in decent shape. I think we're in decent shape. It's just going to be a matter of playing around his big threats like the Kafagrigas can really slow things down. Land turn can slow things down in this matchup we're going to have to find a way to deal with that masquerade as well i know he's going to want to bring that masquerade because of my malamar he's not going to be able to bring the intimidate masquerade because of my malamar's contrary and uh fun fact i almost actually brought tango berry malamar for that masquerade but his other ability is unnerved so it wouldn't have done anything anyway because i wouldn't have been able to get that berry so i'm glad i didn't now in all honesty i wish i would had some kind of strategy for it in all honesty my big strategy strategy has got to be to just uh, knock out the Masquerade before my Malamar hits the field because I tried so many things. I tried Tango Berry, like Assault Fest. None of those calcs worked out where I was able to comfortably take a Bug Buzz. So at that point, I just felt like I was going to bring Leftovers and hopefully threaten him a little bit with it. But we don't see the Masquerade. We see Drompa, Kofagrigus, uh, Sand Slash, Uxie, um, Diancie, and Flareon. Okay, so... A team that's pretty darn friendly to my Malamar being able to just superpower away. I'm going to write down this team so I don't forget to later. Let's see. Uh, Drompa, Flareon, Kofagrigus, Diancie, Sandslash. and Uxie. Now, now Uxie is a huge issue because of um, it being so fast and just you turning away, but... I don't know. I don't think I'm too, too concerned about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how concerned I should be about that. So let's see. Let's think. Let's think. I really just kind of want to lead with with uh, with that Malamar. I think Malamar is going to at least threaten his lead. Although I do think he would lead with the Uxie. So that kind of just makes me want to lead. Maybe I should lead Malamar. Yeah, um, my Cryogonal is not going to be nearly as useful as I would have thought, so I'm going to lead Cryogonal. I almost brought a Specs Cryogonal, but uh, at the very last second, I didn't end up bringing that Specs Cryogonal. It's instead a Life Orb Cryogonal, and pretty much as offensive as a Cryogonal can be, so I don't know. I kind of expect the Uxie lead. If that's the case, I don't think I'm too, too scared of it. Uh, I know it's going to probably try to set up rocks, but if it does, I can hopefully spin them away. Um, but either way, getting a huge amount of damage off on that Uxie is going to be huge, huge, huge for that, uh, lead especially. Whoopsie, I don't know what that is. Okay, so it is the Uxie. I do have that Uxie lead. So, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us? Well, realistically, I guess the switch in would be the Flareon. But, like I said, I'm very offensive, Life Orb. So, I mean, obviously we're not gonna, like, two-hit it or anything, probably. But... We're going to be doing a big chunk of damage to any potential Flareon switch in. Yeah, I am really curious to see what this freeze dry does against a, just a standard ass Uxie as well. Let's see just max HP Uxie. Oh, this is not doing nearly enough. But either way, for right now, I think it's more worth it just to get damage off, even though I do kind of expect the Flareon to come in like right now but even then I don't know I'm not sure how afraid to be of that Flareon the Flareon could flame charge away which would be really unfortunate so maybe I should have pulled a first turn switch I don't know I don't know I also think he has to kind of respect the possible HP ground or something like that because I have um, brought those kind of things in the past or HP rock for that matter I don't know it just goes straight out into the Flareon I'm guessing I don't know what that is yeah, there's the Flareon. So, here's the thing. It does have a free flame charge available to it. 
and no toxic orb because i think that would have um i think that would have gone off right there part of me just wants to go into the malamar right now flareon Let me see, Malamar? Malamar's superpower is doing well over half. Hmm. I don't think I should give up the Malamar this quickly, but also I would kind of be giving up a free superpower if I just went into the, the Gigalith. However, yeah, I don't think I should care too much about whether or not the Gigalith goes down, because um, I do want the Gigalith around, obviously. Pulls a double. Pulls a double. That's interesting. So it does give me a chance to get a Toxic off on this Uxie, which is interesting. I wonder what he was thinking in that situation. I mean, he could have expected me to go into Malamar, I guess? I'm not quite sure what he was thinking, because, uh, yeah, Flame Charge does just so much work to my team at this moment. Those are real leftovers for whatever that's worth, but um, I think it might be more worth it to get this Toxic off right now than to, uh, goes for the Imprison. So, oh, he's trying to prevent me from getting rocks up. He's trying to prevent me from getting rocks up. But in this moment, again, I think the uh, Toxic is a lot more important. And uh, yeah, to be completely honest, I think that kind of just, um, and bites in my Alolan Duck Trio right now. My Alolan Duck Trio literally outspeeds his entire team right now. I'm pretty positive, right? Because um, he didn't have that one thing that was fast. What was that one thing? Um, no wheezing. Man, that's bananas. No wheezing is actually bananas. Yeah, I think Yuxi is the fastest thing on his team. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure um, Duck Trio just naturally outspeeds his entire team, so I'm gonna go for that. I'm gonna go for that. I am Life Orbed and with Sand Force, and uh, he's gonna stay in, so maybe going for a Toxic. If he does go for the Toxic, that would be ideal, I guess. Goes just, just go for the Rocks. Yeah, no, that's that's the best play. That's the best play to go for. But um, but already limiting his moveset, right? So, so thinking through this, right, he has the... Stealth Rock in prison has to have U-turn and probably has Psychic, right? So that's that's your four moves already. So that's going to be interesting to think through, right? Because I don't think he has any reason to stay in, and that honestly really makes me want to uh, click Earthquake right now. That really makes me want to click Earthquake right now, knowing that this is a UC and potentially bad. But no, he he would have the slower U-turn in this situation, so he doesn't really have that much reason to. Well, no, he would hard switch, wouldn't he? Hmm, I don't know. I guess we should uh, count out and see whatever this situation is. Alolan Doug Trio against Yuxi. Right? Um, oof, yeah, no, Iron Head it. Don't get me wrong, Iron Head does a lot of damage, but nowhere near. Oh, I also forgot to put on Sand. Oh no, did I even give this thing Sand Force? Oh no. I have Sand Veil. Oh no. That's bad. Well, I mean, okay, it's not the worst. I shouldn't... I shouldn't go too crazy, but I'm just gonna click Iron Head. I'm just gonna click Iron Head. If he goes in the Cofagrigus, I think Cofagrigus would be his play. But I still, I, A, I still think I do a heck ton of damage here, and B, he was going to take my ability away anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But that was 100% a mistake on my part. So let me think this through. Now, Cofagrigus. Man, I really could have used that extra damage. I really could have used that extra damage. He's going to will his here, so... I do have I do have a mime switch available to me. I don't think he would he has to will wisp. I really needed mime for the scrafty, but mime really doesn't do a whole lot for me in this situation anymore. 
Yeah, I think I just go into mime. I think I go into mime, and then I could taunt this Confagrigus, but... I, I also really need to get damage off on this thing. If it goes for the Toxic Spikes, then that would be uh, not ideal. But yeah, no, the, there, it just goes for the Will-O-Wisp. Just goes for the Will-O-Wisp. I kind of just want to get damage off with Psychic. But I guess realistically, his play would be to go into the Sand Slash. I do have the Hidden Power Fire play available to me, but if he Sash, that would be not great. So I kind of want to go for Taunt uh, just against this thing right here. But... I don't know. I feel like I need to get some damage off. Psychic does well over half, and that would put me in a decent spot. But I have to know how much I'm doing to a sand, to an Alolan Sand Slash with HP Fire. Okay, HP Fire still... Yeah, okay. Okay, I think I'm safe to Psychic, and I think that's the play that I have to make. If you go into the Sand Slash, then... I don't know, I guess I'm not too, too concerned about that. But ultimately, I feel like that's the play that I have to make right now. I have to hit what's in front of me and just uh, take this damage. Yeah, I think if he makes a switch here and, and I just end up leaving damage out on the field, then that would be uh, not great. And doing this much damage to a Kofagrigus would be fantastic at this moment. But let me see. I did say well over half, but that's probably not true. I need to give this thing at least max HP. Even max HP does ha does over half, probably, but not well over half. And this thing realistically has to hit me back with a Shadow Ball and do a lot of damage. And I'm... Mr. Mime is naturally... Mr. Meme, I should say, is naturally especially defensive. I just go for the Psychic. Does a lot of damage. Goes for the Nightshade, okay. So now he definitely has to make a choice, because nothing nothing switches into a Psychic. Although, mm, you yeah, know, judging by that damage, Dazzling Gleam takes him out, and it protects me against the potential Uxie play. So I'm just going to Dazzling Gleam. Getting any damage on, on a potential Uxie switch in would be ideal, and... I think he would think that this that the Uxie switch in is free. I don't know. I might think that myself, but um, but I would like to see how much damage I get off on a, on a Uxie, and free damage on a Uxie would be wonderful right now. Man, I can't believe I forgot Sand Force, dude. Doesn't really matter, but man, it could. It, ha it hasn't mattered yet, but it could. Dazzling Gleam to a max HP Uxie does a decent chunk. A very decent chunk. Do we see the Uxie? We do. Um, but we don't outspeed the Uxie next turn. No, yeah. So, I mean, if this is max speed, also. Well, no, 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 because I only sped crept. I think I only sped crept, um, Lantern. And, uh, this thing gets to take a little bit more damage. I don't know what this Uxie would go for realistically, but, um, I think Mr. Mime did more than enough so far. I think Mr. Mime did more than enough so far. So, so far, the big walls have really, uh, taken a lot of damage. Yeah, okay, solid play, solid play. Although, I do take one more round of, of, um... I do... Oh, no, with a life orb. Yeah, with a life orb and the burn damage. Yeah, okay, no, that's fine. But this does give me the freest possible switch into... Um, switch into my Alolan Doug Trio, right? And nothing would stop me from getting off an Iron Head. He could... Or no, getting off an Earthquake. He could go into the Uxie, but the Uxie is weak enough where... Uh, a, where a return Iron Head would do enough damage. Especially with the toxic, um, with a little bit of resid residual toxic damage. Yeah, there's no reason to click anything but Earthquake here. At most, I think this thing gets Quick Attack, maybe Sucker Punch, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, nothing to be concerned about yet. 
and um, this would put me in a decent spot. And I'm still in a very good position for my Malamar to to uh, do some things in this situation. Um, and I got taken out to burn. What burned me? That was the Cofagrigus. So Cofagrigus gets the Uxie KO. Or no, sorry, gets the um, Mr. Mime KO. But yeah, no, Mr. Mime did a whole ton of work. And the fact that I didn't have to preserve it for the Scrafty specifically helped me out quite a bit. I think he's considering his Uxie switch in, but if he does go into Uxie, that would um, go... Oh, this thing is scarfed. Okay. This thing is definitely scarfed. See, okay, this is what I'm thinking through right now. I could go into my... I could go into my Malamar and go for the knockoff, expecting the um, Cofagrigus to come in. But he might just try to take the Lava Plume damage and just... Uh, I think he might just try to take that. Huh. What do you want to do? Because I because I also really want to go into Gigalith and get rocks up in this situation as well. Part of me feels like um Gigalith would be the play. There's really no reason to go into the to go into the Malamar yet, especially when the Cofagrigus would kind of have like a free time. Now, does this make me want to double? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I'm just gonna click Stealth Rock. He could go into the Uxie, which would be generally fine. But, you know, this thing's definitely scarfed, and we're going to have to manage whatever this thing is scarfed into. I might have to play my Gigalith a lot more carefully, just knowing that this thing is scarfed so it doesn't scarf itself in anything too, too crazy. I I'm going to have to think this through quite a bit more. Hmm. Also, yeah, no, Lava Plume's a good play, because I believe that's a 30% chance to burn, which is uh, not ideal. Not ideal. Goes for the withdrawal. Kafagri is gonna is gonna come in. Uh Kafagri should outspeed me, I believe, right? I'm not I'm not even too sure what Kafagri's speed is. Which I should have known, but I don't. Kafagri is speed 30, so I could have sped crept this if I really wanted to. This thing could will wisp me too, which would be unfortunate. But I think for right now. Is it worth go is it worth going into anything? Uh, he's probably gonna nightshade me actually. Nightshade would probably be his play. I could go into my cryogonal and rapid spin, but what would that do for me? It would it would allow in my it would allow in my Vicavolt to kind of um. I don't know. I'd have to think this through. Also, I'm going to write down that Flareon took out... took out Dougie. Hmm. I think I'm just going to Stone Edge here, although I don't want to miss. I really don't want to miss. 
I'm gonna Stone Edge. Goes for the Nightshade. I really don't want to take that much damage, but you know what? We can handle 50 points for now. We do hit the Stone Edge. We do take this thing out. We're gonna get a little bit of that back with Leftovers. And... What's he gonna bring in now? Gigalith picks up the cough. What would be a switch it now? Sand Slash, maybe? Gigalith kind of sits here a little bit. Goes for the Sand Slash play. Goes for the Sand Slash. Let me make sure. How fast is Sand Slash? I know I looked this up before. I think I want to say it's like 65. Is that right? Yeah, 65. So realistically, you just go for the earthquake, right? Would you just go for the for the icicle crash? Yeah, I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna go into my uh cryogonal. Goes for the iron head, okay. That was a really bad play on my part. I should have seen that coming, but this does let me go in. This could also be scarfed. If this is scarfed iron head, then that would be not ideal. But this Malamar is in a decent position to just uh, start superpowering things. Could, this thing could also possibly just be banded. If it's well, if it's banded, we outspeed. So realistically, you would want to go into the Uxie here. But the Uxie is pretty weak, and uh, U-turn should not do enough to me where I should be that concerned about this. I made quite a few misplays. I made quite a few misplays, but Malamar might actually just um, bail me out. I kind of think that going for Iron Head right there does genuinely kind of make me think uh, Scarfed. But the fact that he's thinking this much, he would not be thinking this much if, the, if this thing was Scarfed. I think he knows now that... Oh, without the Cough Agree, gets this thing. So, he also doesn't know that I'm not choiced at either. So, if I do go for the superpower into his Uxie, then, I mean, knockoff is pretty much guaranteed uh, to take him out, I would imagine. But also, realistically, he would have U-turn, and he's faster than me, so he would U-turn before me. Oh, he's also thinking through whether or not I'm scarfed, because if he goes into Uxie, then uh, the Uxie's low enough where I wouldn't outspeed goes for the withdrawal so I will get that free plus one but it looks like a oh man can I actually take this thing out because that would be ideal no okay I thought I was gonna do quite a bit more but we are a plus one we are a plus one I'm gonna reveal leftovers right now and I guess we have to see this thing doesn't get willow whips does it What does this thing get that can hurt me? Man, we we were just out of range, too. This thing's probably just going to U-turn me. I think, well, also, yeah, now that I revealed leftovers, this thing knows that it's going to uh, be able to U-turn on me, which is, I guess, fine. But we're at plus one now, so U-turn is not going to be doing it as much. Uxie with U-turn is going to do about half. And now is the moment where I really wish that I did end up uh, putting, putting, uh, what's the word, um, putting Tango Berry on this thing after all, but I didn't, and Superpower is going to be the play, right, because he can switch out into 
something to give it up. Oh, he could probably give up Drompa in this situation, actually. He could probably just give up Drompa. Either way, I feel like superpowering is going to be the play here. If his Diancia Scarf, that would be unfortunate. But no, just goes for the knockoff. So that's really interesting. I mean, he definitely expected me to switch out, but I'm going to be a plus two. I'm, I don't have leftovers anymore, but uh, I'm at plus two. And I'm in decent shape. I think he overpredicted. And believe me, I've done so much overpredicting like throughout this whole match, but I think he overpredicted. I'm not sure what he expected me to bring in. Maybe he expected the Gigalith to come in. I guess the Vicavolt, maybe, but yeah, the Vicavolt makes more sense. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I can't say anything because I've done so much over predicting so far, but man, I think I think that's a risk you can't take. I think you have to U-turn out because that Uxie is so valuable. I think that's and, and, and I'm not in a great position. If he had U-turned, I would pretty much kind of be done by now. But Malamar takes out Uxie. And I think I missed another KO somewhere. Um my Mr. Mime went down to yeah. Oh, my Duck Trio went down to Flame. No, I had that written down too. It goes into the Drompa. I'm not sure. This, this thing has to be Scarfed. It's the only way that this makes sense. But I'm just going to click Superpower. Because I should outspeed it. And I don't know how this thing takes a plus two Superpower from a Malamar. I don't know. Oh, the Choppleberry, of course. And yeah, that thing's really defensive. That is very, very defensive. The Berserk's gonna go off, and the Berserk is gonna take me out. Goes for the Signal Beam. Yeah, okay, there you go. I didn't have any, any other play, though. So, as unfortunate as that was, I'm now down to my Gigalith and my, Ma my Vicable. And I have to check on Drompa's speed, but uh, I have to do a quick check on Drompa's speed. Yeah. He would have to invest a lot of speed in order to be able to take on my Vicavolt. And realistically, with this thing gone, my, Vic my Gigalith can take on the rest of his team, but uh, the Sand Slash is going to put a big dent in my team, which is unfortunate. But... Uh, I don't know. We are Assault Vested. If that means we can take a hit from a Flareon, from a Scarf Flareon, Special Flareon, then that would be actually Bananas, but uh, I think... I think that that's unlikely. Wow, I did not realize Flareon had that good special attack. But, I mean, let's see. Lava Plume fl from a Flareon up against a Vicavolt, an Assault Vested Vicavolt. We should take that, actually. Oh no, I didn't even give you investment. So, Max, we should take that still. So, yeah, I really just want to go for that Bug Buzz. Oh no, he, this man actually EV'd himself to outspeed my Vicavolt. Yep, that's going to be it. No, we do take it with the Assault Vest, but that's going to be it because um, my Gigalith is in a position where it can take on a lot of his team, but it's not going to be able to take on um, the rest of his team together, right? So I'll be able to take on the Diancy probably on its own. I'll be able to take on the Sand Slash on its own. And and uh the and the flareon on its own but probably not all three and uh that's gonna be where this one ends i think that's gonna be where this one ends he had some great great berry plays if mm. yeah no that chapel berry really kind of messed with me i don't even have hidden power fire on this thing I just have to let this thing take me out. 
And uh, I guess this is where we can finally see if this thing's banded. But, uh, yeah, that's super unfortunate. Like I said, I really thought like we had a little bit of a matchup, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case at all. So let's see. Uh, Earthquake is going to be the play. Oh, no, I don't have Earthquake. I have uh, Iron Head and Stone Edge. Yeah, Stone Edge is going to be the play. I don't. I probably don't take one from here. I mean, maybe. I'm, I'm pretty defensive. We do take one, so that's fun. But yeah. Ah, uh, that's super unfortunate. All because of that Drompa, man. I think I think he specifically went um, invested in a speed up to my Vika Vault, and I didn't think of that. I could have invested some more speed into my Vika Vault to uh, creep the speed creep. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, no, he definitely, definitely got me with the prep with, with just things like that Scarfed Flareon, the Chompel Drompa. Those two things alone just kind of uh, really, really did me in. I couldn't I didn't have any answers for that that's um, that, that's an unfortunate way to lose but that's a super super fantastic win for him with that thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with another pgbl battle uh just yesterday we battled against music fan nate for week three and next week we will be up against the killer nacho and the schedule does not let up from there it's going to get a lot tougher with a whole lot of really fantastic people so please do stay tuned for that but with that thank you guys so much for watching gonna be once again out